Hello and welcome to this video. Obviously, Southampton today have announced the re-signing of Adam Lalana, obviously the former Youth Academy graduate, and obviously spent a lot of time at Southampton, especially in those double back-to-back -back promotions from League One to the Premier League. Now, obviously, I'm just going to share my thoughts. Uh, it'll be a short video, nice and quick. You boys can tell me in the comments what you think about the signing. For me, one, he's 36, so I don't expect him to be a starter. I don't expect him to play 35 games this season. He's sort of just going to be a squad player, I would presume. Brings good experience to the club and obviously understands what the club is meant to be. Obviously, he was here in the glory, well, most of the glory days, I guess, where we sort of got back to the Premier League. Obviously, he left just before Coleman came in, which was really the peak of Southampton, but he was there for sort of the upbringing from League One and the rebuilding of the club. Now, obviously, he didn't leave on very good footing. People, obviously, from most likely are still upset with the way he left. It was like, what, 10 years ago or something like that? Very long time ago. Obviously, he is a bit older now. And I would agree. I mean, the way he left wasn't the greatest. Um, but you could say that about a lot of players. I mean, football, there isn't much loyalty left. I mean, yes, it's always great to have a player who's very loyal, who stays from their start to finish. But... Players do have ambitions. I mean, things change. There's a lot of things that change behind the scenes that happen. And I mean, you only get one career. You only get five years to maybe 10 years of a peak. I mean, if you spend it all at one club and you never achieve what you want to achieve, then you may regret it later down the line. But obviously, Lalana left. It's similar to Ward Prowse. I mean, Ward Prowse is a different situation, but Lalana left and he went to be ambitious at Liverpool and then he got stitched up with injuries, really. But I think in terms of what the signing will bring, I think he's probably going to be more of a coach than a player. He's sort of just going to play a role in a squad player, bring the experience, be a voice in the dressing room, I would assume. And he's also a free transfer. We didn't pay a transfer fee. I don't know what his wages are like, but I would assume they're not going to be that extreme, maybe like a 40k, which is sort of a squad player. I doubt it'd be anything crazy because he isn't being brought on to be a starter. He isn't being brought on to be a star player that's going to revolutionize the team. So for me, there's no risk. You know, in signing players, there's always a risk whether the transfer fee is worth it, whether the weekly wages are worth it, whether the signing on fee is worth it, blah, 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 right? We've had many signings in the last five, six, seven, eight years that have been dog shit. Really poor, and it's not been worth. I mean, Carrillo, we bought for like 18. Diallo, we bought for like 14. I mean, that's 30 mil already wasted. Lamina was like 20 mil. I mean, those are players that just were not worth the fee a few years down the track. So a free transfer is always a good transfer, in my opinion, regardless of whether they do well or not. That's not really going to have a dent to FFP. It's not going to have a dent to our transfer budget or how much we spend. And overall, he will most likely be a good asset. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to trust the manager. And if Russell Martin thinks Adam Alana is a good signing for whatever reason he thinks, I'm going to back it. I'm going to accept it that he knows more than me because he obviously does. Otherwise, I'd be managing in the Premier League, which I'm not. So clearly he knows more than me. But as I was saying, I don't think a free signing really is that big of a hit. And it's only a one-year deal as well. So if it really goes bad, if it goes horrendously bad, he's not going to be here next year anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But those are my thoughts. A nice quick little video. Again, I don't think it's that bad of a signing. Obviously, people were upset. Oh, if this is the ambition of the board, we're, we're, we're going to get relic. It's like, brother in Christ. The, the window's literally, like, opened right now. And you think that's the business. Business done, boys. No money spent. Adam Milana in. Maybe Fraser on a three. We're staying up. Get a grip, please. I mean, judge... This is what I always say. Judge a manager after a good amount of time, like with Russell Martin, give him a season, then judge him. When it comes to transfers, at least wait for the window to finish. At least wait to see if we are going to make signings. Now, if Adam Milana turns out to be the only signings, then bloody criticize him, of course. But there's still like two months of the window left. Whoa, we're just done. Get promoted, won't spend a penny, mate. Get a grip, please. I mean, I've been on Twitter for five seconds. I've seen enough. I've seen enough. And obviously there's many signings that will come in. I'm, I'm, I'd stand right here. I'd put money on at least signing six players. Maybe seven or eight. I mean, it's a Premier League season. We've got players that need to go. And we've got players that need to come in. Positions that need strengthening. And we need depth strengthening as well. There's many positions to improve and it's not like it's going to be only Lalana and only Fraser that come in. People acting as if the 
Sport Republic didn't spend 100 plus mil in their first season, a first full season at the helm of the club. Like, yes, we got relegated. Yes, maybe we didn't sign some of the things we needed to. Obviously, the managers were a big issue after Ralph got sacked. There was many issues with the managers that came in. It doesn't exactly mean the board's not going to spend. I mean, even this season, we were they were criticized again for not spending. FFP and Championship is a lot tighter than it is in the Premier League. We had to sell a lot to just be okay. Our wages were obviously one of the highest in the league. And now we're back in the Premier League. There's going to be less restrictions to spend. We're going to have more money to spend. We made so much money last summer. We'll make probably some money this summer as well. We've obviously freed up the wage budget with a few players' contracts going. They're obviously going to spend. They don't want to get relegated. They're obviously going to try and build the club and back Russell Martin to stay up. It is stupid to think that Sports Republic are just going to go... Well, yeah, we spent 100 mil two seasons ago, got relegated. Then we got promoted, but we're just going to bin it and just get relegated again. They're just not going to do that. You do realize the reason so many owners in the Premier League want to spend more is the fear of relegation. The money made in the championship is not even close to the Premier League. As long as they feel like they can stay in the Premier League, they're going to be fine. And that's why Southampton, you could say, Gow didn't spend and all that sort of thing. We didn't need to to stay in the league at that point. We didn't need any money to spend to stay in the league. Our team was good enough to stay in the league. Just, <laughs> just bear in mind, but the point still stands. Now that we are promoted, we're obviously going to be one of the favorites for relegation. They're going to spend. They're going to try and prove the team. They're hopefully learned from their mistakes of last time, buying too many young players, not getting enough experience that was critiqued. Now we've got plenty of experience. They've gone, oh, he's bloody me, me. <laughs> You can't win. You buy young, buy experience. You buy experience, don't buy him, he's bloody old. It's kind of how it works, but... But yeah, obviously there's rumours um, going around with a lot of players, but I'm just going to wait till they're confirmed, whether it's Fraser, whether it's Downs, whether it's Ward-Prowse coming back for some reason. I don't know why either West Ham would sell or would buy him. It's just not going to happen. I would love him back, but it's not going to happen. But that's it for this video. Um, let me know your thoughts. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you boys in future updates. And I will be doing Euro watch-alongs. Very rarely, I'll do the England game against bloody Serbia, whoever they're playing first. So I'll see you boys for then, but have a good one.